So one of the cool things about Honkai Star Rail is that we've received diversity in the form of four stars being pretty much similar to their five star counterparts. And Misha is that character. I expect Misha to be a four star version of Jing Lu. Pretty much Jing Lu at home. For those of you that don't have Jing Lu and wasn't lucky enough to roll for the character, then Misha should be a nice free to play alternative. Yo, what up? Toshi here. Now, obviously, we don't know how Misha works as a character, right? Because nothing has been revealed. We don't even know the skill set of Misha. All we know that is that character is of the same element as Jing Lu and is of the same path as well, but being a four star character. So obviously that character must be a four star version of Jing Lu. And the reason why is because it has happened before. In the path of erudition, we have a four star serval, which is a four star version of Jing. So they're doing the same thing with the release of Misha, which ends up being a four star version of Jing Lu. So with that being said, for those of you like me that don't have the character, I think this is very nice. And I hope they continue to make four star version of five star characters. I guess with the release of Zui XY, She'll be like a four star version of Seal, but not necessarily because Seal and this character is on the same path. And to make a four star version of Seal would be very difficult because Seal is a very strong character and she has a very interesting kit. So they would need to make a four star character that is able to reset their turn whenever they kill an enemy. And I don't think they would do that. So funny enough, as I said in the previous video, I've actually been working on my Herda and this is my Herda's build currently. And I expect to pretty much throw these stats onto that new character Misha whenever we do receive Misha. And honestly, with Misha being a destruction character, that character may or may not have traces in the form of crit. We'll have to wait and see, and Herda has a few crit traces, but not too much. So I'm looking at about 5% more crit, but this character does receive a lot of crit in her kit from just following up and hitting the enemy. Now I do have 71% crit, 102 crit damage, and I do have a pretty high amount of attack, she's only level 40. Now do keep in mind that my crit damage could be way higher, but I'm going to keep it real for you guys. I am not farming more than this. Farming relics in this game is absolutely painful. Look at my helm. My helm sucks balls. It's so bad. My boots are kind of better, but they're not really saying much when I have 9% crit, flat attack, break effect, and like two rolls into defense percent. Literally so many wasted stats. And then my chest is a crit rate chest with crit damage and break effect. But to be honest, this character needs a crit damage chest because she already gets a lot of crit rate in her kit. But I do have a decent NR Soseto set on this character with crit rate, crit damage. Effect rate is useless. I had this on Payla and I kind of just threw it on my Herda. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just use this on her now. And then the rope is pretty decent. But as you can see, you don't really need to farm too much for four-star characters or new characters in general. You just need to throw them on something and they'll pretty much do their job. And I will throw these relics onto Misha whenever that character does arrive. In terms of Light Cone, I really do want to utilize the most Welcome You because this Light Cone gives so much attack to the wearer whenever the wearer is able to use that basic, elemental skill, and ultimate all in the same sequence. Now, hopefully that character ends up using the basic every now and then because for the most part, it, most of the destruction characters at this point have not been able to utilize this Light Cone because for some reason, every destruction character now just has enhanced basic attacks and they don't use their elemental skill to do damage. So hopefully it's not the case with this new character. Jing Lu is a little bit of an exception, but I know you're never really going to use the basic attack on the character ever. However, just like any other character in the game for the destruction path, you're pretty much well off just using a secret vowel, which gives so much damage boost to the wearer. This light cone is so good. The under the boost sky light cone may be a good option on the character. And of course the five star herd of light cone will also be really solid on the character as well. It depends on what you have on your account and what you're not utilizing on your other characters at that given point. Now the thing is about XY because XY as we is a destruction character, right? The upcoming four star quantum character. She doesn't use any enhanced basic attacks as far as I'm concerned. So therefore she's a character that may end up just breaking the mold when it comes to destruction characters going forward. So Misha may not even have an enhanced basic attack to begin with. And if that's the case, then you may end up being able to utilize that character inside a team as a main DPS. Because, well, if that character ends up taking away skill points to do damage because they may not have enhanced basic attacks, right? And therefore they consume skill points like Daniel, then you probably want to build your team around that character. But if that's not the case and that character ends up saving on skill points, then I would love to slot them in with Herda. And I would have two characters that do AoE damage in the form of Ice, and it'd be very nice for Pure Fiction coming up. One of the coolest things about having a team like that is that Pale is a 4 star that is very valuable. She has very nice synergy with every single Ice character in the game, and at this point, still going forward, Ice is the highest usage element in the game. And that's because Jing, Lu, and Pela together are monsters, and the memories of Chaos and all of the game modes as of right now have been catering to Ice characters. 
And I think with the release of Ruan Mei, because she's a character that's going to synergize very well with Ice characters, will be very nice here. And actually, March 7th will be a very solid defensive option, because not only would you have more chances to freeze the enemy, because not only are you going to be weakness breaking the enemies in AoE settings, you have to remember Ruan Mei helps with the weakness break efficiency. But I know, you don't necessarily need to have Ruan Mei in a team like this, and like I said, if the character Misha ends up being a character that does not consume a lot of skill points, then you can slot Misha with other damage dealers, and I think that's very nice for the upcoming Pure Fiction game mode. I don't think that Misha was designed with that game mode in mind, I just think Misha was designed with being a 4 star version of Jinglu in mind, if, you know, Misha's kit, I don't know, is Misha he or she? I think Misha's a femboy, but Misha ends up being the 4 star version of Jinglu, then that's just very nice for free to play players. I'm sure most of you that have Jinglu or maybe you don't have Jinglu, well, having the ice damage set is most likely going to be best in slot on the character. What I do like about Honkai Star Rail is that you can abuse the fact that the 4-piece relic sets for the most part, I would say the exception is the 4-piece quantum and the 4-piece dot set doesn't really have much value compared to having a 2-piece and 2-piece on your damage dealers. So the set like this, the 4-piece isn't as valuable as just having a 2-piece ice damage and a 2-piece attack. The 4-piece is still going to pull ahead of having the 2-piece and 2-piece, but it isn't a drastic difference like in Genshin Impact for example. So the honest truth is that anyone that does not have Jinglu should probably wolf her at some point. Now I do know that for the ice element as of right now we have a lack of ice characters. So Jinglu being the 5 star ice character is just going to stand out to all the other ice characters in the game. Because well the bar was Herda and Herda wasn't really that valuable as a character. Until we receive you know pure fiction in the near future. But having Misha means that there will be a little more competitiveness in the ice element. Which is just nice in general. But Jinglu is still going to be a drastic increase in terms of DPS and overall account value. But never say never because I showed you the power of QQ in a previous video. And QQ compared to Seal, honestly, sometimes QQ is better. And again, gotta remember, she's a 4 star character and Seal is a 5 star limited character. So it all depends the situation you find these or use these characters in rather. But I think with Jinglu being a 5 star AoE damage dealer, it's going to be very hard to make a character that is better than Jinglu in AoE. When that character is a four star so qq having aoe it's just aoe is better than single target so for qq she is the exception to the rule here that's going to be today's video here i hope you enjoyed it and honestly i wanted to talk about misha a while back when we did get the character reveals for 2.0 but you know with sparkle hanabi and then black swan it was very hard to try and find a opportunity to make a video on the character and then ruan may too no one really cared about misha misha was just you know swept under the rug but here I am bringing Misha back because I am honestly interested in having a four star version of Jinglu just because there is more options for players across the board. I think that's always a nice thing to have in gacha games in general. Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day. Peace.